It's hard to resist not picking up your phone, but there are applications that will prevent you from taking your eyes off the road. Just a few days away from Christmas, this is not the kind of weather travelers were hoping for. If we do go off the fiscal cliff, not only could many of us see an increase in taxes, but things like food for seniors could be cut. Students say this simulator is more than just a reason to get out of class. It could save somebody's life. A Fayette County restaurant is robbed for the second time in just over a week. Employees say the subway on Jones Avenue in Oak Hill was broken into again on Friday night. Breaking news out of Raleigh County. The University of Charleston is taking over Mountain State University's campuses in Beckley and Martinsburg. We've been seeing snow fall all day long and it's not going to be stopping anytime soon. And we've been seeing reports that it's only going to get heavier this evening. Michael Harshaw was headed to work this morning when a young man knocked on his door and barged in. Their morning was nothing like they expected. The family said it seemed like it lasted forever. My son is a good kid. He's just made some bad choices. Gwen Alexander says her son and his gang called the Jack Boys in East Beckley are out of control. My son included, along with three other juveniles, have been sent off due to uh, carrying guns in their backpacks, fighting violence. And see, my question is, why does it take all of that for us to get help for these kids? These boys are vandalizing homes, drinking alcohol, and doing drugs. For the past few months, Alexander's son and his clique have been trying to leave their mark in this neighborhood. Well, right behind me, they left it on some telephone wires. Those shoes that were put up there on that telephone pole were my shoes. That's a sign of a crack house or drug dealing. These actions have caught up to the 17-year-old. Right now, Alexander's son is sitting in a detention center in Princeton. Thursday, took a BB gun and shot somebody in the neck. Now, if I had been a regular gun, you know, if the cop had seen it, they would have shot him. Alexander tried to get help for her son before this happened, but she had to wait a month when she filed for an incordial petition. But look what's happened. I've been trying to get help for my son because of his out of control behavior since November the 8th. OK, and look what's happened. Somebody had to get hurt for him to get help. Police have been called out to Morris Avenue plenty of times, but Alexander says neighbors have to help control this problem. We as a community need to stick together. I'm not the only one that's seen these kids out here at night drinking. I'm not the only parent that has problems with their children. Alexander says there's one group in the community that can help save these boys from destroying their future. We need some more mentors out here. We need some more men to step up to the plate and help some of these young boys before they get out of control and they can't be helped. Though Alexander will not see her son for a while, she hopes he knows she's doing this for him. My son is an excellent child and I want to see him get the help that he needs. I want him to know that he's better than these streets and it's time to wise up and grow up before he turns an adult. In Beckley, I'm Lauren Havland for Newswatch. We've had in our soul that he was up on the side of the bank somewhere safe, but I guess God had it another way. You know, it's just hard to deal with. It's hard to understand. Search and rescue teams were going on their fourth day of looking for Bradley Alexander when a local fisherman found him three miles away from where he was last seen. So we were expecting to really find him today or tomorrow. Um, so that is pretty typical uh, with the uh, the weather condition. 41-year-old Bradley Alexander's family say they received horrible news Sunday morning, but not knowing was even harder. It was very hard on the unknown part because we've been searching since Wednesday, you know, walking these banks up and down. A lot of people has put their time in. These rangers have really worked hard to help us from dusk till dawn. Strenuous work conditions and nonstop searching ended up putting a toll on everyone during the four-day search. Tiring, tiring, uh, not knowing, you know, the end, you know, and it was just pretty exhausting, pretty tiring, pretty tiring for the family. Wednesday evening, Bradley Sr. was out with his oldest son, and that's what his family wants to remember him by. He loved the river, loved the fish, and that's why he was here. I mean, you couldn't keep him away from the river. You know, if he wasn't working, he was down fishing or swimming or boating. So 
he died doing what he loved. Bradley Sr. loved the river, even though he was taken by the river. In Thurmond, I'm Lauren Havlin for Newswatch. State police in Fayette County are on the hunt for marijuana. It's a gateway drug and it's an easy way to get drugs off of there, off of the uh, streets in the area. Troopers have paired with the National Guard to get a bird's eye view to find the illegal plant. People that are certified in it uh, at the flying in the chopper and they just go locate the patch where uh, normally they grow, it's open area. And uh, as you can see here, some that we pulled, it's different colored green from the sky so they can locate it pretty easily. They spotted from the air and uh, got us in on foot and we go ahead and take the plants out of the area. Even though it's just the beginning of the growing season, as you can see, state police have been extremely successful in seizing the marijuana crop. Yesterday was a very successful day. Uh, plan on today being uh, just as successful. So far we've been very successful. Today is just as good as it has been yesterday and uh, we're just getting started today so hopefully we have a lot more to go. Police have been so successful, they have already seized more than 400 plants, which means one thing for the area. Getting more drugs off the street so they can't grow it and cultivate it and then turn around and sell it. Troopers say even though they don't usually make arrests while eradicating marijuana, seizing this much will show the community they're cleaning up the streets. Just a dramatic drop in the drug activity in the area uh, helped to improve uh, the area. State police will continue their search throughout the week. In Armstrong Creek, I'm Lauren Havlin for News Watch. As we get closer to the edge of the cliff, it's not a pretty sight. Because of the fear of going over the physical cliff. It will impact policies here in the Mountain State, including Head Start, taking away four and a half million dollars, 150 jobs, who will not be able to serve more than 730 kids. Um, not resolve things in Washington prior to the end of the year, that serious challenges and very real challenges will occur in West Virginia and in Southern West Virginia to our um, populace. We know that there will be cuts and there will be changes in the social service um, aspect in West Virginia once this happens. Charities like United Way will also take a hit and even this year they were not able to meet their goal of $500,000. If we do go off the fiscal cliff, not only could many of us see an increase in taxes, but things like food for seniors could be cut. Well, how are we going to offset the $700 million that's predicted to be cut from the food budget through the Commission on Aging? I have no idea. Um, each of us will have to pay more, but we're already going to have to pay more in income taxes. I mean, where does this end? With only days away from the new year, there's only one question on everyone's mind. Will we fall off the fiscal cliff? And if we do, it will be a calamity. If you have any questions about how this may affect you, there's still time to call your local legislator. In Beckley, I'm Lauren Havlin for Newswatch.